Hey, Dan here, and this is, of course, Dreams Around the World. And as many of you have heard me say before, my mission with the channel, at least part of that mission, is to help you become the best version of yourself. And that's exactly what this video today is about. How do you actually become the best version of you? I'm going to dive deeper into this in another video, but to give you a little glimpse behind the scenes, part of my bigger mission is that I believe when people become the best versions of themselves, they're more likely to give and to create a better world. So by becoming our best selves, we're able to give more and have a greater impact on the world, which is maybe something we could use right about now. So I'm gonna cover the three steps to becoming the best version of you. But the first thing to look at is, what is the best version of you? And how do you ultimately define that? Because it's not being the best version of you like your parents wanted you, or the best version of you the way advertisers want you to be. I mean, if we all tried to be the way advertisers wanted us to be, then we'd all be those really broke people in mass amounts of credit card debt who buy everything we're told to buy, right? So you wanna find the best version of yourself. And often this is going to involve looking inside and developing self-knowledge, learning more about who you are and what you really want, not what's been programmed into you. One reason I like personality tests and all these sorts of things is it helps externalize things that we sort of know about ourselves, but haven't quite put into words. And it helps identify things that are different about us and say, hey, that's why I don't want the same things maybe my parents wanted or my friends all want or whatever. And so developing that self-knowledge I think is really important. As you develop that knowledge about yourself, you need to accept that and accept yourself. Now I'm not saying accept some random personality test you take, but I'm saying when you really start to figure out who you are and what's important to you, even if it's different than what all your friends want or your family wants, if you know that that is really who you are and what you want, then accept that. As you might guess, I talk to a lot of people who open up to me and some of those are my coaching clients, people that I get to know really well. And it's not uncommon for someone to struggle for 10, 20, 30 years because they are say an ENFP trying to do what their ENTJ parent wanted or they're trying to fit into some square when they are a circle. And so yes, you can try to conform. And if you're relatively smart and gifted, you can probably conform your whole life and you can get by, but you're never going to really create an extraordinary life for yourself. And you're going to always feel like you're struggling. So the earlier that you can accept yourself and realize like, hey, those things I thought I wanted, maybe I actually don't want those. And that was just something I thought I wanted because I was a teenager and other kids wanted them. And then as I grew up, we all sort of stay teenagers wanting what all the other kids have and accept who you are, what you want. And then with that, with that self-acceptance, which is so, so important, start to develop a new vision. Start to think about what it is you really want. Now in this video, I'm talking about your vision for yourself, the kind of person you wanna become. But in a video later this week, I'm going to talk about the vision more for your life and the kind of life you wanna create. So think about who you'd like to be. And one of the things that helped me with this when I was younger is thinking about role models. You know, James Bond was one of mine. Of course he was, right? And these different people, different entrepreneurs that I admired or different figures that gave me someone to look up to. And I never wanted to be exactly one of them. Some people maybe have that, but it was different people that I could look at traits from them and admire these things and be like, hey, I would really love to have that trait or to learn to be that way. So that would be where James Bond came in, in terms of being cool under pressure and being able to handle yourself in interesting situations. Now, this isn't about becoming someone you're not. Remember, we're all about self-acceptance in terms of how you're wired to be, but it's about becoming that better version of yourself. So find role models of people who have similar traits to you, maybe a similar or the same personality type and have done something amazing or become someone amazing and you can look at that as a model to help create this vision for yourself. So that was a very long step one. Step two, and for some of you, you might even need to start with step two if you're being bombarded by shitty influences, but is to change what influences you, to change your inputs. So if every day you wake up and you watch three hours of TV or you're reading fashion magazines that tell you you need a $500 purse or an $80,000 car, or whatever else, you think that's not gonna influence you, that is gonna shape what you think you want in life. The same thing with the people you spend time with. These inputs 
influence you. They change who you think you want to become and what you think you want. And this can be especially, especially tough for NF types. We have so much empathy. You know, as an ENFP, this happens to me all the time. If I'm spending an extended period of time with a group of people, say I'm spending a lot of time with ENTJs, I'm going to take that in and that can really have a big influence. So really pay attention to the people around you and, and, and the media, what you're taking in. And I include media, even things like Facebook, Instagram, emails you're getting from people, all this. Make sure that it's aligned with the person you wanna be. So if you have so much input, like you can't even think about the person you might really wanna be, I would suggest some kind of a media cleanse where you unsubscribe to almost everything except this channel, of course, and stop watching TV, all this. Give yourself a break to start to maybe get more in touch with who you actually are. But if you have some clarity on who you wanna be, you have that vision for the kind of person you wanna be, your best self, then what I would suggest is look for inputs, look for books, audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube channels, and people. People are by far the most powerful that you can spend time with who will be an influence to be more like your ideal self. So who are the people that if you spent time with would influence you to become more like your ideal self? Because I'll tell you this, the easiest way to make a transformation is to change the people around you. And if you can change the people around you to be people who will help align you with and move you towards your best self, well, that makes life a lot easier, right? And the third stage is taking action and actually making changes. So very often you'll actually be able to shift your behavior just by deciding that you want to change your behavior or by changing the people around you or those inputs. Recently, I had this thing come up with my eye. I won't get into it, it was kind of weird, but essentially some kind of stress related to being a type A personality was messing with my eye. And I had this pattern of going into a bit of a spiral around stress. It didn't happen very often, but if some I got some bad news, I didn't really handle it well, and I'd start to just dwell on that. And it would usually last half a day at most, not the end of the world, but not a positive thing. And when I found out that this was tied to this condition, which could in the long run, if it keeps coming back, have long-term consequences on my vision, I have not went back in that state because there was so much pain associated with the potential loss of vision and even the short-term pain of having to go to the doctor and deal with like all that sort of stuff, which I really don't like. There was enough pain there that it's changed my emotional wiring. So when something really negative comes up that could put me into that sort of stress spiral, instead I just, I, the first thought that comes to mind now is, is this really worth it? I don't think so. Let's take a break. Let's think about this logically and let's deal with this. And it's actually changed my behavior because there's enough leverage. And that's a topic I'm going to expand in the next video on Tuesday. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, do hit that subscribe button and the bell. In Tuesday's video, I'm gonna go in depth into how do you make change and make yourself take action. Maybe you feel afraid of making a big change. Maybe you're reluctant because you don't know what will be on the other side. I'm gonna get into all of that and how you get the leverage to actually take action and make big changes in your life. Thank you for watching. As I mentioned, if you're not yet a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I have a few really, really powerful videos coming up over this next week. So if you are a subscriber, but you haven't hit the bell, hit that as well so you're notified, and I will see you on Tuesday. Thanks for watching.